The movie begins with Granny talking about giving birth to triplets to the man of her dreams, but that man wanted a way off, so that Granny became a single mom of three. Then that candle's like, girl, I feel sorry for you. Then bang, it turns magical and builds the Granny a house to live in rent free. Oh great, it's haunted, but she's like, hey, a free house is a free house. So the flame on this candle doesn't go out as this magic candle gives this triplet superpowers when they come of age. And when the triplets have children, they also get superpowers. So this granny's basically creating her own Marvel Avengers. So she hypes up her granddaughter Mirabel that her gift is gonna be epic with the purpose of using those gifts to make the family proud. Sounds very Asian to me. And the last flashback we get is Mirabel approaching the magic door to get her powers as the film skips to present day and we're introduced to the Colombian Avengers. So Mirabel's like, hey kids, I wanna be a Dora the Explorer wannabe. This is my family cause I got nothing better to do. And this is her aunt who can change the weather based on her mood, and this is Bruno who can see the future but left the family mysteriously one day. And this is Mirabelle's mom who can heal people with food, and she got married and has three daughters, Mirabelle the nerd, Isabel who makes flowers, and Louisa who should have been the real she-hulk, cause she actually uses her super strength to good use. And now her aunt also got married and has three kids, so this one's a snitch who has the ability to hear everything, which isn't exactly a flex by the way. And this dude's a shapeshifter, and then there's Antonio who gets his powers today. But the kids are like, Mirabelle, we wanna know what your powers are. Uh, Mirabelle, the fuck you doing? Nothing. She was gonna flex her gift. She didn't get one. You didn't get a gift? You're gay. So Mirabelle is seen as the odd one out in the family as everyone else flexes their gifts. Does anyone want flowers? We. Oui. Girl, I will knock your pick me ass out. How about mmm? And when Mirabelle's just trying to help, the granny's like, You don't have a power, so you're a useless piece of shit. No one likes you, do you know that? And you don't make the family proud. But what's stupid about this is, this granny don't even have powers either. So instead of liking Mirabelle more because they cut from the same cloth, the granny's like, nah, fuck that. You don't have powers? You're a disgrace. And she just takes it. Meanwhile, Antonio's a word because he's like, What if I don't get a gift and I become a failure like you? You little shit, fuck you. So when it's time for Antonio to receive it, he gets help from Mirabelle as she gets PTSD flashbacks of the day she was meant to get her powers by touching the magic door. And the candles were like, nah, you ain't special. Hello! Nani. But for Antonio, he does get a gift and it's the gift of talking to animals and he ends up riding cheetahs and shit. And although Mirabelle was happy for him, Granny starts showing all this favoritism love Mirabelle wished she got but never did because she didn't get any powers. Then they deadass take a family photo without her, making Mirabelle crash out like, <laughs> And she starts singing about how she's not good enough and waiting on a miracle. But what's ridiculous about this whole thing is that this granny acts like all their powers were earned from hard work. It's like, no, y'all got that shit for free from the candle. Because they got a gift, all of a sudden granny thinks they're better than everyone else. And when you don't get one, you're the disgrace of the family? That's stupid. Then Mirabelle starts seeing cracks forming all over the house and the candlelight growing dangerously dim. So while Lil Man be dancing, she's like, the house is in danger. You're all gonna lose your gifts. See? Uh, the fuck? But there were cracks everywhere. I swear you're all gonna be just like me. Ugh, she's such an attention seeker. We get it. You get no love in the family, so you do anything you can to get some attention. Enough! She is the Lulu. And a giftless bastard. Really, bruh? Oh, she's staring her down like, How dare you ruin Antonio's night, you little puta madre. Then at night, Mirabelle's like, fuck it, and throws water on the candle because she in her villain era. Just kidding. She overhears Granny talking to her man's like, I miss you. I haven't gotten laid in 50 years. Then she starts saying, what if the candle dies? We can't lose our home, our casita. Hey, Granny, if you don't want to lose your home, ever thought of using the powers and building another house with it? Hmm? So you're admitting there is a chance the candle does go out and the house will collapse and you still not going to build another house in case that does happen? Man, she's really putting all her eggs in one basket. So Mirabelle goes, I'm going to save the miracle. Wait, how the fuck do I do that? So she talks to the snitch who hears everything and goes, what's the tea? Your Hulk sister's eye was twitching last night. Damn, she can hear the eye twitching when trying to sleep? What a shitty gift. Could you imagine anyone who gossips or talks bad about her in town? She can hear all of it. And if there's constant voices in her head, wouldn't that drive her crazy or insane? So Mirabelle starts sussing out She-Hulk while Granny orders Flower Girl to become a baby making machine and get married so she can create more Spanish Avengers. Wow, it's almost like this Granny doesn't see her children as humans, but tools she can use to benefit from. Anyway, Mirabelle keeps asking what's wrong and turns out her sister Louis Louisa feels she's never good enough for the family and has an insane amount of pressure to do better. Sounds very Asian. Welcome to the crop. So Mirabelle comforts her as Louisa says she started feeling weak around the time Mirabelle saw the cracks. Then tells her to check Bruno's tower as his last vision might have something to do with this. So she enters Bruno's room just to end up eating a bunch of sand and sees a mysterious door open on its own. Uh, fuck. The shit I'm out. Then she finds and collects green glass of Bruno's vision but it has her face on it. Me? <coughs> yeah, I ain't doing that shit again. Ah! The fuck? Sorry. Is that lice in your hair? Then her sister's like, I'm losing my gift. Mwee. Then the granny immediately starts blaming her. What did you do? Nothing. I Stay away from everyone. You're like an infected rat. No one wants you here. Got it? Oh, granny about to catch these hands. About to look like the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. Because what did Mirabelle do so wrong? Like she's just trying to help the family. This granny toxic. 
But Mirabel keeps trying and mentions Bruno, so they sing a song dedicated to talking Bruno and how evil he is, but the song is so catchy it got her grooving and sh Oh yeah, she vibing. So everyone says Bruno brings bad luck and misfortune, like this guy. He goes, Bruno said I'd be fat, so I'm fat. He said I have no hairline, so I have no hairline. Uh, starting with you, hop on the treadmill and cut the calories. And you just gotta go to Turkey, my boy. And with Isabel being a pick me with Mirabel sick of her sh The songs in these films kinda go hard, and she then puts the pieces of the vision together just for her dad to pull up like, the f Everyone might lose their gifts and the house will crumble cause of me? But the dad's like, nah, I got your back. No one has to know. I know. And I'm a snitch. So when this dude and his mom come over for dinner to marry Isabel, the snitch is like, ooh, I'm itching to tell everyone. And she's like, you better fucking not. So she ends up snitching, more cracks out to form, and Louisa goes, wah, I'm wee. So Mirabel's like, hurry the fuck up and marry her. But the snitch ends up telling everyone and says, ooh, ooh. Then these random ass animals put the glass pieces together and sends it to Granny. Here, have a stroke. Ooh. <laughs> So the dinner ends in disaster, as this dude does not propose to Isabel, and Mirabel takes all the blame as usual while the granny's like, Please, I need his babies! Then Mirabel notices some mice enter into a secret hideout, and in there she meets Bruno. And you'd think he'd be all dark and evil, but actually, he's a cutie patootie who's never left home and really loves his family. And turns out Bruno was watching the family eat daily, which was kind of creepy. Then Bruno says the night Mirabel didn't get her gift, granny begged him to see the future, so when he did, he wasn't sure what it meant, but everyone will think the worst of it and blame him, and that's why he left. Pretty much confirming the granny chased him away out of fear that he'll be blamed for everything and since Bruno's gone the granny's now taking it out on Mirabel instead and she's like you can't tell me to leave you b look for a vision again but I don't wanna if you need space y'all can use my room meanwhile fuck Mirabel that stupid b you can't say that about my daughter she did this she don't care about her family when I see her I'm gonna smack her with my taco Hey, she said it on me. Then Mirabel finds out in order to prevent the house from collapsing, she needs to hug and reconcile with a family member. Who is it? It's Isabella! I ain't hugging her pick-me ass. Arr. Then Bruno dips and says, you got it from here, and Mirabel enters her room. Hello? The f*** you doing in my crib, you ugly f***? I feel like you need a hug. I feel you need to say sorry for being a failure. Go on. Apologize. Sorry that your life is so perfect, you selfish, entitled, spoiled b***. Out. Admit it, thanks to your pretty privilege, you live a good easy life. Well, I never wanted to marry that red flag fuckboy. I became a baby maker for the family. So Isabel reveals she was raised to be perfect, but that's never who she was or wanted to be. And turns out with her powers, she not only creates roses, but can create all sorts of plants. And just like that, Isabel discovers she can grow weed and starts her own drug cartel. And she becomes insanely rich and the sequel to Encanto is actually El Chapo on the run. Man, that would have been such a goaded ending, but jokes aside, the sisters end up reconciling their relationship. And Granny's still trying like, please make babies with my granddaughter. I'm trying to make my own Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> Mommy! Shimmy shimmy. Oh, she dead. So they hug and the cracks literally start to fade, but then the granny enters. I'm saving the miracle. Shut up. You should have never been born. Isabel can grow weed. You little shit, just stop. Bruno left because of you. All this shit started because of you. When will you learn? You don't belong in this household. Just because you didn't get a gift doesn't give you the excuse to be a cancer in our lives, so fuck you. I will never be good enough. Ain't that right, Granny? None of us will be good enough for your bitch ass because it's always been about pleasing you. And that's why Bruno left your toxic ass. He didn't care about us. He loves this family. And last time I checked, you don't have a gift either. So if you're calling me a failure, the fuck does that make you? Don't you dare. The miracle is dying because of you, puta. Then the entire house cracks, everyone loses their powers, and the candle is in serious danger. So Mirabel tries to save it and ends up falling, and thanks to the rubble, the candle is dead along with the magic in the house. And Granny's like, man, I had 50 years and children with superpowers to build another house, but I didn't. Wow. Then Mirabel's like, I talked back to my grandmother. There's no going back. I'm leaving home. This film does an amazing job highlighting the toxicity of living under a strict household as it turns out every character who opened up in this film felt like they aren't good enough, perfect enough, and will take all the blame even if it's not their fault. And I wouldn't go as far as calling the granny a villain because it's not that she's actually evil or have deceitful intentions, because it's her first time being a mother too and she's definitely trying her best. So what makes this film so good is that it shares a story many people of all races can relate to. Feeling like you're never good enough no matter how well you do, trying to be someone you're not to please the family, or being once loved to suddenly feel like there's favoritism to another once they're disappointed and how you turned out. It's perspectives like these that are addressed that makes this film so great. So Mirabel is depressed but Granny finds her and shares a story about her younger self. So one day I see this man and I'm like, ooh, he cute, so I wave but I slipped and he's like, <laughs> I'm gonna make you give birth and leave you. And before I know it, I'm married and give birth to triplets. But one day, this man decided to leave me and make me a single mom. Like, how could he? And it was the candles that saved me. And because the candles give me another chance, I was so afraid to lose this miracle. I lost sight of what a miracle really is. I'm sorry.
You know what? I don't even blame her. If I became a single mom of three kids and didn't get laid for 50 years, I'd be pretty pissed off too. And my parenting definitely wouldn't be the best. And with the granny saying sorry, if she really is a strict toxic mom, this apology ain't even happening in real life, by the way. Because in the real world, Mirabelle's gonna get spanked, granny will never apologize, and she might maybe make you food to make you feel better after you get beat. But Disney makes sure they fully reconcile their relationship as Bruno then pulls up and is immediately welcomed back into the family. And then the people of the town help rebuild their home. But this dude, he goes, I'm so freaking horny. So she's like, well, we got a cousin. You're the red flag I go for. Yas. Uh. And literally after one minute of meeting her, he goes, let's get married. No. And what do you know? When the house is rebuilt, the magic comes back to the house and their pals return as the movie ends with the family taking a wholesome photo and this time including Mirabel. So I ended up watching this movie because you guys wanted a video on this for the longest time. And let me tell you, it's super super underrated so thank you guys for recommending such a great film for me to watch and enjoy thanks so much for watching it's been your boy kc and yeah till next time